What a mighty God. Hallelujah. What a loving God. Jesus. God, there's none like you. You alone are God. Hallelujah. With you, nothing is impossible. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap. Lord Amen, amen. I, well, I'm telling you, that just, I'm not a crier, but boy, sometimes you just can't hardly help yourself. Thank you, Hal, so much for, for leading us this morning in worship. It was a blessing, amen, and I do feel the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Not that I have to, He's here whether I feel it or not, but man, I appreciate it when He lets me. Hallelujah. Let's give Him another hand. Amen. God bless you all. Thanks again, Hal, and thank you all, the worship team, for helping us to uh, enter into the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Read it. Um, as Eric said, today is our anniversary, and God, you know, God knows all the things that have went on. But what I have to say is how personal God is. Yes. Because the song Amazing Grace, that's what we had played at our wedding. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So God made it special yes. for us today in that. Amen. Yes. Thank the Lord. And led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, indeed. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He is a personal God. Amen. We kind of mock that thing sometimes. We it's so used a personal relationship, but that's exactly what it is. Yes, you is. may get tired of hearing it, but that's the fact. He wants it personal. This isn't yes. just some mass throw it out there and hope that somebody yeah. bites, you know. I mean, he comes to us individually and reveals himself as our Heavenly Father. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you all Sunday school kids. If you haven't already bailed on us, you may. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Again, God bless all of you for being here. Thank you so much for your testimonies and for sharing your prayer requests with us. It's a privilege. Amen. For us to join together and take those before the Lord. Amen. He is a great God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Life is good. Amen. 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 Y'all, anybody that have kids or grandkids, thank you. I have to be reminded. Amen. <clears throat> Not because I'm forgetful, I just talk fast. Praise the Lord. And if you have kids, you know that you're always, especially as they're Getting to be like Ivy's age here, they'll, they'll they'll put anything in their mouth that they find, you know. So this little kid, he, he ate a silver dollar, and uh, they had to take him to the hospital. And of course, uh, they waited around for an hour or more in the waiting room. And finally, a nurse came out, and they said, "Is he is he okay? Is he going to be all right?" And she said, "Well, there's no change yet." Praise the Lord. My uh, youngest grandkids that are here today, they. Uh, they all play soccer, and uh, they love it. And of course, they're, they're kids. They love anything that, where they can get out and run and jump and kick and carry on. To. But you know, did you know that Cinderella was kicked off a soccer team? I mean, who would think Cinderella? I mean, of all people. But she was kicked off because she always ran away from the ball. <laughs> <laughs> get, they get more painful as we go, so praise the Lord. You know, as I'm getting a little older, uh, a little older, I said, they tell you that swimming is good for you. So uh, I decided to do that once in a while. But usually when I, once I find my golf ball, I'm, I'm ready to call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> water management, praise the Lord. But seriously, I do uh, 20 minutes of water uh, aerobics every day. Well, <clears throat> I call it aerobics. Sally calls it uh, getting out of the bathtub. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know they're horrible. You would be surprised how many of these I get. I get people calling me all the time wanting, here's one, try this, you know. And once you start down that road, they just never end, praise the Lord. But, amen, I want to talk to you, all the testimonies this morning and, and all that was being shared here is so on point with what the Holy Spirit's been dealing with me about. Now, we talked about the prophetic uh, reality that we all exist in and operate in or have the potential to, 
uh, last week, and I want to carry that on a little bit further, but not, not focusing on what we would think of typically as the prophetic, but it is whether we think of it in that way or not. And so I'll just, we'll just get right into it rather than me try to explain it ahead of time. Uh, Sheila, if you will, let's start with Psalms 119, verse 24. Psalms 119, verse 24. David says that thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors left. Verse uh, 99. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. And then verse 111. Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Revelation 12, verses 10 and 11. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of their lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. And finally, Revelation 19 and verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Praise the Lord. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And so testimony actually are the words of God. A testimony uh, is the written or spoken record of anything that God has done. Everything God has said or done belongs to us. It's our possession. And as the family of God, we inherit his testimonies. The separation of sin has been healed. The thing that separated us from God, that kept God at a distance from us, or kept us uh, from being able to interact with God, or be one with God, has been healed because of the cross. And now we have to allow the testimonies of God to teach us the truth that Adam and Eve lost. Amen? What Adam and Eve lost, actually, was both God's plan for history and our identity and our role in that. God's plan for mankind hasn't changed because God doesn't change. Whatever God's initial idea or plan was is still his plan today. It ha he hasn't deviated from it at all. Amen? But most of the church, the problem has been we haven't understood the plan well enough, amen, to walk in it. And that's because our minds haven't been renewed by the testimonies of God. Amen? Romans 12, verse 2. I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit maybe, but you know, when we give a testimony, we call it, you know, someone has a testimony or a prayer request or what have you. Actually, the testimonies they're given are not theirs. They're, they're giving a testimony of God. Amen. I mean, I'm sharing the testimony, but the testimony actually is what God has done. What? Praise the Lord. And so in Romans 12 and 2, he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be, uh, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Ephesians 4 and verse 23. We know the perfect will of God. We know the acceptable will of God because it's all right here in his testimonies. Praise the Lord. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Hallelujah. So the Greek uh, word there for uh, renew is to renovate or, or to reform. And most Christians understand that God has forgiven them. Amen. They, 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 they get it that their sin has been taken care of, that God has taken care of the sin. But they haven't entered into the purpose of that forgiveness. We think it's to escape hell, and of course it is, but that isn't the purpose of it. That's just a byproduct of it or a benefit of it. Amen? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to read a lengthy bit here, verses 7 through 18, Sheila. 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through 18. Praise the Lord. Yes. 
But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. This is exactly what Don is talking about in Romans 8. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, and that, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. See, they couldn't see past the law. They couldn't see past the... The fear, physical fear of God. We've talked about the fear of God today, and we're not talking about I'm afraid of God. No, I just have an awesome understanding of who he is and what he is, and so it's, it's just amazing, you know. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So we have renewed our thinking by defining ourselves according to his truth. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. So we live with limitations, amen, that God never intended us to have. He never gave us those limitations. We put them on ourselves. Amen. We have the opportunity to stop looking at history through a finite perspective. And to increase our experience of this transforming power of the testimonies of God, which is our inheritance. Amen. That takes us from glory to glory. Amen. It, it moves us into his image. Praise the Lord. All right, Galatians 3, verse 24 and 25. Now, excuse me, Galatians 3, verse 24 through 26. <clears throat> Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are the children of God by faith, in Christ Jesus. So what when we read the Old Testament today, when we read that Old Covenant, we're reading it with a revelation of the New Covenant or the better covenant. So it isn't that it's untrue. It's all just pointing to a greater reality, which is Christ. Amen. Yes. And so when what happens too many times is we would go back and read it as though that were what we're dealing with today as a law or as a rule or a regulation, when in fact... Really what it's about is to show us what God's capable of doing, the testimonies of God, so that under the new covenant we can appreciate those testimonies and believe that we can have that same reality in our lives today, no matter what the testimony might have been. Amen? amen. So David saw that testimony, amen, under the old covenant. And he saw that testimony, and he, didn't, he knew that that old covenant didn't reflect God's highest desires or highest reality, if you will. Amen. That's what made David so different than the other uh, prophets or kings or, or leaders under the old covenant because he saw something they didn't see. He saw that God was not this angry, judgmental thing. He just, he understood there's a reason for these rules and these laws and that's to bring us to a place that we quit trying to do things ourselves and start depending on God. Because God's not trying to get us. He's trying to bless us. He's trying to help us. He's trying to encourage us. And, that, and God loved that reality in David. That the fact that David could see beyond the rules and the regulations. Now, he was a failure at the rules and regulations like all of us. Amen. But he didn't let that keep him from pursuing God. Amen. So, in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, let's look at this. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Praise the Lord. Christ was the living testimony of God to this world. 
He was saying, look, God doesn't want to destroy you. He doesn't want the law to, to, to be a death sentence to you. He wants the law to bring you to him. Amen? And he, has, he hasn't come to destroy you. He hasn't come to, to, to ruin you. He's come to bless you. He's come to be a blessing. That's, everything that Jesus did was to be a revelation of God, the Father. Amen? So the word testimony in Hebrew comes from a root word that means to repeat or to do again. Amen? So God's words, we talked about this a few weeks ago. God has integrity. Why? Because whatever he says is who he is. Who he is is what he says. He doesn't say one thing and do something else. To do that would be, mm -hmm. would, it, it would mean you had, not, you had not integrity. You were not using integrity. Amen? So God's word can't be separated from his works because he has integrity and because God and his word are one. That you, you can't separate it. Amen? And so when we declare the testimonies of the Lord, what we're actually doing is describing who he has promised to be in me and for me. Praise the Lord. When we give a testimony, what we're saying is, look, this is what God promised me, amen, for me and Him. To reveal Him and to bless me. Praise the Lord. So, hallelujah. When we're, he, he has promised to be in us and for us. Amen. And we're putting a demand on heaven for these promises, for these testimonies to be renewed when we say them. When we give a testimony of what God's done or we give a testimony of what his word says, amen, what we're doing is putting a demand on the spirit realm, amen, to release that again into our life. Mm. Praise the Lord. That's what Jesus did all the time he was here. Mm. Amen. And so he wants, we want to have them renewed and demonstrated, amen, in the present just as it was in the past. Because with God, there's no time. It's always now for him. He isn't looking at something that he did for a prophet back, uh, you know, under the old covenant. It's just something he does. It's just who he is. Amen. And that's relevant for any age, at any time, in any place, for anybody who will believe it. That's testimonies, praise the Lord. And so that's exactly what God wants us to do. Amen. Not just when we have a church service and we give testimonies, right. but every time we pick this up and we say, and we find where God has done something for anybody at any time, that is a testimony of God, and that's what we're supposed to be sharing and, and saying back to God. Because it will become a now thing for us who are in time. It will become a present reality where it has only been a historic e uh, episode somewhere in somebody's life or in, the, in a history that we have read. Amen. So look at, let's look at this in Isaiah 51 and verse 16. Say it again. Isaiah 51 and verse 16. Now look at this closely. He says, I have put my words in your mouth. In other words, I've given you a testimony. I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens... And lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, thou art my people. We, we know that we are the true Israel or the two, true Jerusalem. Amen. Not that the Jews have been abandoned. It's just that during this time, he has turned from the Jews to the Gentiles. Amen. And so now we are the reality of Israel. Yes. Praise the Lord. And he says, I have put my words in your mouth. I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth. And say unto Zion, thou art my people. So where are the heavens planted? In the same place God has laid the foundations on earth. Praise the Lord. It's called walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. He's talking about using a renewed mind rather than a carnal mind. Praise the Lord. The idea is planting the heavens. That's what he's talking about. What did, look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Jesus had this, of course, he had the revelation. He was God in the flesh. But everything that he said was a testimony of God. Amen. So he said, the king, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God said, I'm going to bring this thing and plant it on earth. I'm going to plant the heavens on earth if I can find somebody, amen, that will share the testimony. Amen. Isn't that what he said? When my word comes down like rain and like snow and it will... If I can find somebody that will repeat it or say it back, it won't 
be void. It will accomplish whatever it was that I sent it to accomplish. Amen? So the idea is this planting the heavens. This is a prophetic uh, declaration that isn't focused on the foretelling, amen, of a future event, but it's calling something into existence. Praise the Lord. That's what, he, that's what we do when we testify, when we give a testimony of what God has done. We're not, talking, we're not talking about something prophetic that could happen in the future. We're talking about bring it now. Bring it on. We want this manifested now. Praise the Lord. And Jesus did both. Amen. He prophesied or declared things for the future, but he also caused things to happen in the moment that he would say it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He, he, whatever came out of his mouth, it was a now thing. Yeah. It happened. Amen. He said, it's not me that's doing this. It's the Father that's in me. In other words, I'm just sharing with you what he already said and did. And when I do that, it happens again. Yes. Because I believe that my Father has done it. Yes. It's Amen. done. Amen. It's already accomplished. Am I making sense to you? Praise the Lord. So whenever he said something... He said it only as a testimony because he said, it's not me that does, does the works. It's the Father that's in me. Yeah. Amen. And I only say what I hear my Father say. Right? I only do what my Father does. All he's doing is giving testimonies and watching them happen and, and be revealed. Amen. In the present, in the right now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, remember, everything Jesus did, he did as a man filled with God. Telling us, this is the thing you can do. This is what you should do. Amen? Amen? Prophetic words change the atmosphere. Amen. We're singing songs here. It's, these are testimonies of God, are they not? And what happens? I'm telling you, I don't know about anybody else in here, but the atmosphere around me changed. I felt the change. Amen. Made me want to weep. Made me want to, made me want to make a grown man cry. Praise the Lord. Doesn't want to cry, but you can't help yourself. It just wells up in you. And it's the joy of the Lord. It's, it's the reality. of It's like all of a sudden he's more real than he is at any other time. Not that he isn't always real. But nothing else gets in the way. The atmosphere changes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so when the atmosphere changes, when the prophetic word changes that atmosphere, it acts as a, it acts as a catalyst. Amen. That, that sets in motion a, a chain of events. Yes. Amen. That bring the word to pass. Have you ever wondered? I mean, all of us have been in different environments, but I know from Pentecostal experiences, you get into a church service where there is testimonies and there's worship and there's praise. There is a sense of God's presence, and you see miracles happen. Yeah. Not because of the person that's preaching, not because necessarily even of what they're preaching, but it's the atmosphere has changed, and we're all, for some reason, more aware of God's presence. And the more aware you are of God's presence, the more value you put in His words and the more you expect things to happen, yeah. amen, that wouldn't otherwise happen. And therefore, we see miracles. We see people get healed. We see people get born again. It isn't, it isn't like we create an atmosphere. We create an opportunity for God to change the atmosphere yeah. by believing what He has said, by expecting what He has done in the past to happen again. That's testimonies, amen? Prophetic words change the atmosphere. They change everything around us, amen? And they bring that same word that's testified to to come to pass. It's repetition is what it is, amen? Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Now he says, you want to follow after love. You need to love one another. That's the commandment of the new covenant, right? And desire spiritual gifts. Believe that you're going to operate and, and let God know you expect to operate in the, in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. But rather, or most importantly, you might say, prophesy. Praise the Lord. Revelation 19 and verse 10. We read this in the opening, but let's look at it again quickly. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am the fellow, thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when, when we declare 
the works of God. When we declare his testimonies, we release a creative prophetic truth, a God truth. Amen? Not something we just, you know, think is true or have some history about it, but it is the word of God. It is true whether we've ever experienced it or not. It's still the truth, right? We release that creative prophetic truth. Praise the Lord. Remember, testimony is to do again the word of God. Yes. We're, we're, caught, we're telling God, do it again. Mm. We believe you did it. We believe it'll happen again. We believe it's happening all the time wherever people are believing for that particular testimony. Yes. That's what we're seeing when we see miracles. We're seeing people testifying to the power of God and then we see it happen. Mm. Amen. We're not making it happen. God makes it happen. We're just agreeing that it has taken place and whatever has been done will be done now and forever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why? Because he's not in time. Anything he's ever done, he's still doing it, you could say, from a time perspective. Amen? So Deuteronomy now. Let's look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 7. We, we have a tendency as human beings, and I'm guilty of it as anybody, we turn things into works. Not, not intending to, yeah. but just like we confess the word, right? Mm. What we're doing is we're testifying to God's works, right? And then we turn it into a, and you know, we used to always have those ones that we would do over and over. And over. The only reason we quit doing it is because it becomes like rote to us. It becomes just repetition, and it, there's no real God involved. It's just, uh, no, 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 you know, it's kind of like the old flashcards when you were a kid in school, if you were old as I am, when they do the two plus two, four plus four, and just over time, just the repetition of it, you eventually get it, right? You don't really know any more about math than you did when you started. You just, you just know that this and this is this, right? I mean, any, anybody in school, you know, mostly what you learned in school is how to pass tests. Seriously, I mean, I did, you didn't really learn a whole lot of anything other than this is the answer they want. Whether I understand the, why they come to that conclusion or not, I just know if I want to pass the test, I've got to tell them what they want to hear. Amen. Well, God wants us to have more than just an education in theology. He wants to have us have an experience with him. He wants us to know how this is supposed to work so that we can achieve what he wants us to achieve and so that we can have what he wants us to have. Amen. So he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Yes. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Now he's not just saying you only do this with your children. He's saying this is something you do everywhere, wherever you are, yes. with anybody. Right? Of course we want to do it with our children because we want them to be raised in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. But we do it. That's our general way of living. That's our normal way of interacting with people is testimonies. Amen. Talking about what God has done, what God will do. Amen. Who he is and so on and so forth. So the testimony is supposed to be a part of our conversation. Not just something we read off of a list, which I do that. I mean, I have a confession that I have that I do every day. Several pages, in fact, because I, I need some testimony. <laughs> so, I need some help. Amen. But you know what I'm saying? I do it as a repetition only because it, it gets it into my thinking so that as I go through the day, it's the, yeah. the dominant thought to begin with. Amen. So then I'm, I'm kind of prepared for the stuff that's going to happen. That's my fallback. You know, that's my fail safe. I can, stuff's going on, and I'm thinking, what in the heck is this all about? And how am I supposed to fix it? And I can go back to the fact that God is my source. God will handle it. God is more than I am. All i got to do is trust in him and so on and so forth. So testimony is supposed to be our conversation. The power of the testimony is that God is really giving us access to the knowledge of himself. This is what David found out. See, prophesying over ourselves with the testimony, when we do that, what we're doing is releasing something in the unseen realm that actually pulls us into the real experience. Amen? Right? That's the reason for it. When we prophesy or when we give testimony, it's to draw us in to the actual experience, not just a historic, you know, hey, did you know this happened? No, it's God, this is what God does, and it pulls us into that reality. Right. Praise the Lord. If I'm prophesying about God healed Jane or God healed Andy, or God healed my wife. Amen. What am I doing? 
I'm pulling that experience into the now. I'm making it available at this moment. I'm not just talking about something God did a long time ago. I'm talking about God. Yeah. This, is God this is what God does. This is who God is. And it makes that reality available now. Amen. Amen. Not just something that happened in the history. Amen. Whether it was five years ago or whether it was a thousand years ago. God is the same. Amen. So, what we see as impossibilities when we testify to the word of God or to God himself or testify of God, what we're doing is making the impossible possible. What looks like it's impossible in the moment, in the now, because it's all screwed up and we don't understand and the doctor's saying this and the lawyers are telling you something else and all that. All of a sudden, when I start to testify of God, it brings that reality and it becomes more real than the visual. In other words, I'm looking at things that are not as though they were, the way God taught us, amen, to react and respond to life in the natural, in time. Praise the Lord. It pulls us into the real experience where we see the impossibilities around us changed by the God of the testimony. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So look at Joshua now, Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. And this will kind of touch on what I was just talking about a moment ago. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt, thou shalt have good success. Now, we read this, I have at least, in the past, and saw it just as God saying, you better learn the law, buddy, and you better get the law down correct and make sure that you're doing every bit of that law. But actually what he's saying, this book of the law, in other words, he's saying, my word is what I want you to get. I don't, I'm not as interested in the keeping of all the rules as I am you getting to understand who I am and what I want to do for you. Amen. So don't let the law depart out of your mouth, but you'll meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then... Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. So first we don't declare the testimony, amen, mindlessly. It's not just to be a repetitive thing that we do. Now we have to do it repetitively, <clears throat> amen, to get it down into our heart. But that isn't the way that things actually develop, amen. So we are to focus, what he's telling us here is to focus our minds and our imagination on what we say. You know, you can, I, I can read stuff and not remember it 10 seconds after I read it. It's a gift. I mean, has anybody else, have you ever tried, you're reading a book and you read and you're, you, you get to the next page and you go, my God, I don't even remember what I just read. This, is, this doesn't even seem to be in context because I don't know what I read a moment ago. Amen. And it's the same way when we repeat things, if we're not meditating on it, you know, if we're not thinking about it, it just goes right through, through the mouth, out the ears, and we don't really get anything out of it. It's, we're not hearing even what we're saying, to be quite honest with you, right? We think we're doing the right thing, but nothing is changing because our minds aren't really being renewed. They're just, they're just getting a flash, and then it's gone. Amen? And so we have to focus our minds and our imagination on what we're saying. And our meditation on what God has said has to involve talking. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. The Hebrew for meditation means to moan, and I like this one, to growl, <laughs> to utter, to muse, to mutter, or to speak. So it's the same word that's used to describe a lion growling over its prey. You watch National Geographic, and they got the antelope or the whatever it is there, and they're making sure nobody else gets it. This is mine, right? Well, this is what David was doing, and it's why he was a man after God's own heart. He wasn't, it, we, we read that and think, uh, he was a man after God's, and he wanted God's love. Well, God already loved him. That isn't what this is talking about, I don't believe. I think what he's talking about is God was a man, or David was a man after God's real identity, who he truly was at heart. Not what the perception was, not what the law kind of, revealed him to be, but who he really was. And that's why God interacted with him so. Because David really wanted the truth. He wasn't interested that much in religion. He was interested in the God of that religion. He wanted to know him. 
And God was drawn to him because of that. Even under the old covenant, praise the Lord, which is why he's a type of Christ and why Christ will be sitting on that throne for eternity. Amen. So it's like, look at this in uh, Psalm 66, 5 through 8. This is a perfect example of how David thought. Psalm 66, verses 5 through 8. And that, it also, it's such a picture of grace because David was such a screw up. I mean, we know the adultery, the murder, the, the lying, the counting the people after God had told him not to. I mean, just in the face of God, he just went ahead and did it. And yet, God shows his grace by blessing David. Now, sure, there were consequences to David's behavior. The family was all dysfunctional and everything else. This is true today. Yeah. I mean, God's grace is sufficient. He, he forgives us. He loves us. He, he saves us. But we can still do stuff to screw everything up in life. Right. Yeah. And it's not God. He's not punishing us. It's yeah. just, you know, break the law and you're going to go to jail. So that's, and it, it isn't God sending you to jail. It's you made a bad choice and now it's consequences. So come and see the works of God, David said. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. And he's not saying he's just horrible to him. He's saying he's powerful. What he can do for man is unbelievable. Amen. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He ruleth by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Praise the Lord. Now, crossing the Red Sea... And the Jordan River were things that had taken place hundreds of years before David wrote this. He wasn't there. He wasn't an eyewitness to any of this. He wasn't there. He just had heard, amen, by the testimonies of God, right? And so it, it's like he invites us to come over and watch these things happen. And then let's celebrate God together. That's David. That's the way he was. I mean, that's what he was about. Come and see what the Lord has done, you know. And let's celebrate this thing together as though it happened just this moment. As though it just amen. happened to us. Amen. Not to somebody hundreds of years before, but right now. Amen. What David discovered is that God, the God who performed them exists beyond time. Amen. He did it. But he didn't do it to God. He didn't do it a thousand years ago or fifteen hundred years ago. He's doing it right this second. And that's what David had tapped into. Amen. And, and when we meditate and speak what God's done, we can't help but come to the fact that these are also the things he's doing yes. and the things that he will do. Mm. If he's ever healed anybody, he's still healing. We've all heard that. But that's the reality. If he ever, if he ever saved anybody, he's still saving. So we can say we actually pursue these encounters, the works of God, as the real prey, the meditation, the growling over the prey, like a lion growls over his prey, right? So that's actually what we're doing. We're, we're like the lion pursuing or catching the prey and then growling over it. This is mine, buddy. This is my thing. This belongs to me, right? And that's what we're doing. We, we pursue these encounters with God or the works of God as though they are the prey. Right? Yeah. Amen. We are hunting down the experience of the fullness of our inheritance in the testimony. And that's what the testimony is. It's our inheritance. It's what belongs to us. Amen. Yes. It's what Tim said. And he said it many times and it's so true. It's developing a lifestyle of remembering. For us, it's remembering because we're in time. Mm -hmm. For God, it's just who he is. Mm -hmm. Right? It's just what he is. Amen. The Hebrew word for remember is a word called zakar. And the root word for that is to be male. Now, I know that sounds like an oxymoron or something, you know, contradiction almost. And it doesn't really make a connection. But look at this. And even though it seems odd, man carries the seed of reproduction, right? And when you remember God's supernatural interventions in these impossible situations... You carry in you the seed of another miracle because we have, right, the testimony. Wow. When we remember what God has done, it's like we take the seed of a particular miracle, mm -hmm. deposit it in a new environment, mm -hmm. and another miracle takes place. Yes. 
How many people have been healed, Jane? I mean, God knows. But all you did when you and Don prayed, you just took the seed of what you knew God does and you just planted it into another environment. And what happened? Bang! The same thing that always happens. God heals. Praise the Lord. That's the power of the testimony. We can, you can call it whatever you want. I mean, we're just dealing with semantics at this point. But I'm just saying, whatever it is you want, find it and give testimony to it. And you see the reality of it. Praise the Lord. If you believe, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. The fact that we have the ability to remember is offset by the fact that we also have the ability to forgive. I mean, I don't know about anybody else. I've had some fantastic things happen in my life that God has done. But I can get flat-faced with a new situation, yeah. some circumstance, yeah. and it's like, at least for a little while, it's like nothing ever happened before. All I can see is the dark. All I can see is the fear. All I can see is the yeah. potential horrible outcome and the crisis and so on and so forth. Amen. So it's amazing is that we can forget things that seem to be so unforgettable yeah. when they happen. Yeah. It's like when it happens, you go, oh, my God, this was the Lord. And whew, how about it? And, you know, like we say, Israel went through the same thing. You know they were shouting and dancing and, and uh, songs were being written on the other side of the, uh, of the Red Sea. And two weeks later, a month later, whatever it was, they're out in the desert and they don't have any water. And they're going, oh, my God, you brought us out here to kill us. They forgot what was unforgettable. Praise the Lord. And everything God was doing was trying to give them another testimony. Give them another thing that I, this is what I do. This is who I am. This is what you can have. Right? Praise the Lord. Joshua chapter 4 now, verse 6 and 7. Joshua 4, verses 6 and 7. That this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean ye by these stones? This was, Tim was also talking about this and others this morning. Then you will answer them. When they ask you, what, what is this, what's this all about? What's that mean? You'll answer them and say that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it passed over the Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Wow. Praise the Lord. The supernatural interventions of God yeah. are in themselves signs. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And in that, they are realities mm -hmm. that point to greater revelation of God himself. Mm -hmm. So it's not just God's trying to do another miracle, but the signs, the wonders, the miracles, or whatever they are, they're actually pointing us to God's reality, to who and what he really is, what his intentions are, what he wants to do. Amen? Amen. To God himself. Joshua 4, uh, 5, 6. Joshua 4, verses 5 and 6. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take you up every man a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Verse 7. Then you will answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And when it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. So the pile of stones was a memorial and a sign. Amen. A sign that pointed to another sign. Amen. That pointed to the reality. Right? It was a testimony to a real fact. To a reality. It was a sign that pointed to something that pointed to the reality of it. Yes. The sign is no longer just a sign. It is just pointing you to the reality of God. Of what God will do. What God has done. What God wants to do. Amen. So your testimony, just like all testimonies, is a story about who God is and what God's done. Praise the Lord. We need to constantly be reminded of who we are in God and who God is in our lives. Amen. Because that's what positions us to demonstrate his power in us and through us. Yes. 
It's not just he wants the ritual and he wants it. No, it's the only way God can be revealed to us and then revealed to others. By the testimony. By faith in that testimony. Amen? He's our true inheritance. And I love it. Our exceeding great reward. He's it. He's the whole deal. We're looking for stuff when it's all we need is him. The stuff is just, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all this stuff gets added to you. It happens as a result. Amen? He's our true inheritance. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. This will, this will be it. We'll wrap it up here. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Praise the Lord. That's a good scripture. <laughs> For now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. So here it is. As we live our lives here on earth right now, we see in part. Yeah. When we're living in the natural, we're only seeing fragments of what the reality is, right? Mm -hmm. When we're operating just in the world. Amen? But keeping the testimony focuses us on the life through the lens of God, shaping our perception of Him and changing our perception of ourselves. Yes. That's what He's trying to tell us. Amen? We see through a glass darkly. Why? Because we're in the world yeah. and it's in darkness. Yeah. Amen? The God of this world is the God of darkness. Amen? But we have been transformed. We have been delivered. We're in this world of darkness, but we're not of the darkness. And that's what we have to continuously remind ourselves of because our natural fallback or fail-safe is always to go back to the flesh, always go back to what I understand intellectually or what I have experienced in the past or what somebody else has experienced in the natural. When God is saying, all you need is a testimony. And that testimony will change your environment. It will alter the world that you're in, and it'll bring light. It will do exactly what Jesus said it would do, and that is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a testimony that we all have to share. Amen? And every time, no matter what you're confronted with, and you will be this week, we all are with something. Get a testimony. Speak what God has spoken, and watch the situation the environment, the circumstance, conform to the spirit realm. Amen? Conform to God's testimony. It invites him, amen, to be himself again right here and right now. Amen? Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks again, How I appreciate you being here with us and worshiping, sharing your talents and your gifts from the Lord. It was great. We enjoyed it all. Amen. God bless all of you. Have a great week. You've got a testimony in the Lord. Use it. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Kids are probably all angry. They're just